Hey, I am Elise, and I'm gonna share with you a mentorship session I had with Julia last week. If you are also someone who's just getting into UI and UX and you're unsure of whether or not you should get an internship or if you should start applying for jobs or even know if your portfolio is ready to share and if you should even start applying, this is gonna be a great video for you. <music> Hi, Julia. Nice to meet you. It's 10 a.m. here right now. I went to a meetup group. My first time I've been to a networking group in, a, in a, like maybe at least a year. 7.30 a.m. It's real early. I was like, am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? Am I going to do it? And I was like, okay, just get up, girl. Just get up. Meet these women and uh, these entrepreneurial. Meet these, meet these ultra. Why can't I say it? 7:30, but it was really nice. I met like a, a great group of like six, six or seven women. It, like it wasn't a typical networking event where you're exchanging business cards. It was more like just chatting about our challenges and where we're at in our business and stuff. And it was okay. really nice. Yeah. So I just came back from that. <laughs> you said you were interested in an internship. Um, so I had Julia fill out a little questionnaire so that I can get a better understanding of where she's at and where she wants to go and what she's hoping to get out of our session. And so Julia is an Android app developer who is transitioning into a UI and UX designer. And she was unsure of what next step she should take in her career and if she should get an internship. What, what area of UX have you been most attracted to? Was it the research? Was it the um, wire framing? Was it, is it high fidelity designs? And what area have you kind of been going more towards? Uh, I have worked with high fidelity most. Okay. I don't have, I haven't done any research, so. Are you, are you like, oh, I'm not that interested in that part really? Or is it that you just haven't been able to, to do as much research because you're on your own? I think I'm uh, less uh, interested in it. Um, it's great to like understand like the process of elimination of understanding where exactly you want to get into um, yeah. to kind of figure out where you should take the next step in your career and what sort of places you should be looking at to work at. What do, would you say your learning style is? How do you like to learn? I am very independent so I can uh, search on the Google and look at tutorials and I like to learn by myself. And what about um, wireframing? Have you done much wireframing and low fidelity Never stuff? Never done it. Never done it. Wow. I'm just right though. Uh, I just do design, uh, high fidelity. Right just high there. fidelity design. Got it. It really seems to me that you are more of a, a UI designer than, yeah. than, than a UX designer because UX usually involves more of the research or the low fidelity wireframes, figuring out like placements of content and so forth. And you're really attracted to the visual look and feel and like maybe colors yeah. and branding and so forth, right? Exactly. Okay, great. People will call themselves UX designers mm -hmm. when they don't actually use the UX process at all. Yeah. And it's good to have an understanding of who you are and where what your biggest strengths are when you are trying to look for a job or an internship. If The more yeah. clear you can be, the better. And actually, that's what internships help provide is, is clarity. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know where they want to go. But it seems like you're very, yeah. very, so much sure of, of, of your strengths. And so that's a really good first step to be at um, yeah. uh, because I have talked to many people and they say like as many uh, companies you do like both like both the UX and the win. yeah it depends yeah. on the company if, if it's a larger company then you're gonna have different departments. If you are in a smaller agency, like a marketing agency, they might yeah. expect you to do both. And it's good to have an understanding of UX best practices as a UI designer, but it doesn't mean necessarily you're gonna be a UX designer. Focus your attention on visual design because that's what you're good at and that's where you wanna be. And then yeah. spend maybe 15, 20% of your time on UX best practices. Because I see yeah. that you have a lot of Adobe projects, a lot of beautiful yeah. visual design, like I can tell that you, I could already tell what you were interested by looking at your designs yeah. that you're very visual focused and yeah. that you have a really great aesthetic already. So learning and growing and getting better at that is where I think 
you are gonna be most successful because you already have skill sets there. So the more you grow and develop it, the better you're gonna be and the better you can say, I'm, I'm a great UI designer. Um, I always think it's better to specialize than to be a generalist. Of course, it's great to be a generalist when you are first learning and you wanna just get exposed to all of it and see you know, what, what you like the most, or maybe you're someone that gets bored easily and you like moving around and doing different things, that's great too. But if you do really like a particular part of the process, um, then I would suggest specializing in that. And so that's why I suggested for Julia to just focus most of her attention on UI. Have you tried to get a, a UX UI job or an internship yet? Have you done no. that? I, I wanted to talk to you before. <laughs> yeah, tell me about what's what's stopping you. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready uh, if I had have a good portfolio. Frequently asked questions alert. Is my portfolio ready? Is it good enough? Should I share it? Am I ready to apply? I would take one of your projects that you are most yeah. proud of and flesh it out more, like flesh out more flows, make it look like yeah. at a real working project versus a daily creative challenge. I always think it's really impactful to do makeovers is what I call them, design makeovers. Exactly. If you take a product that's already well known somewhat in your sphere, but really could use some visual help, if I'm a hiring manager and I see like a shitty ass app and then I see yeah. your designs next to it, I'm like, wow, she's really visually, yeah. like she can do a lot versus like a, a creative challenge that's like in the ether. I don't really know what it is yet. I would I would only think that you would need one, maybe two case studies like full on like that and just have your other visual like challenges also on your portfolio and that would be enough. Are you looking for an internship in person, remote, all of it? What, what kind of internship? I want to be in, uh, at a company. So. In a company. Have you yeah. done any research and looking, just not even applying, but looking at inter internships in your area a little bit but not much <laughs> okay i would suggest going and looking at what internships look like in your in yeah. your area because it could be very different than what's in my town in la right mm. and look at what are the qualifications what are the the job duties and so forth because like i said everybody has a different definition of yeah. ux ui now here are a couple examples of some job postings in the LA area, and I'll kind of decipher whether or not I think it's more of a UX role versus a UI role. This company here says uh, they're looking for a UI UX designer, but when you read the first few sentences, it says we're looking for a hands-on visual designer with experience in UI UX, must pay a lot of attention to detail with a visual sense for typography, color, space, hierarchy of information, etc. What I could tell from this is they're probably looking more so for someone who's a UI designer that has enough of an understanding of UX to be able to lay out features and content on a page in a way that's going to make sense. Now let's look at this other UX UI designer hosting from NBC. So they're looking to work with the UX team to deliver user journeys, user flows, wireframes, mockups, prototypes, someone to incorporate UX research tools, data, persona, competitive analysis, metrics, and then guide, maintain, and communicate UX UI consistency of experience across all platforms. So for this posting, I think they're really looking for a UX designer, someone who's more of a UX researcher, be able to understand how to use metrics and personas, et cetera, and less of a UI designer. So this might be someone who is strong in UX, but can use a style guide or can look at a UI library or a pattern library and be able to reuse those elements and lay them out on, in, on a page in a way that looks good. But it doesn't mean necessarily that there's someone that likes to create visuals and a visual identity from scratch. We'll say in so, LA, there's not that many UX internships or not many UI internships. That's not, that's not as readily available. But there are junior roles and there are also startup companies who are looking for junior designers because they're looking for someone who's pretty cheap but can do the work. And that also might be a good arena for you because you already have great visual skills and maybe it's enough for a, for a startup to hire you and, and get you going because you're so independent and you can learn on the job and learn quickly. That might be a good avenue for you to just like work on your skills and actually have a, a actual product that you worked on versus just fake 
portfolio projects. Sometimes I'm, I'm sure you know you've looked at job postings in the past and you say they say like oh we want this 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 right and you're like okay nobody has all that I have like 60% of what they're saying that's good enough like go ahead and apply so I would I would almost open yourself up to other opportunities besides internships uh, if if you're if you're open to it yeah because that's how I learned my first job was three months being the sole UX UI designer for the startup. And I did my first project. Does it look shitty? Yes. Like when I look back on it, I'm like, that's not great work. Um, but it was, it was, it, I, my skill level matched the company's level that they were at the time. They were still a startup. They were new. They couldn't hire anyone that was like at a certain level, making a certain, you know, they couldn't pay a certain amount. And we had a connection and I learned a lot from that project. And I was able to put it as my first full case study on my portfolio. Yeah, that's so, awesome you're already very much in a very good place to kickstart your career right now. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry about um, the UX process. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really want to start working. So liquid information Yeah. very good. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. Well, yeah. good luck in your career. Keep me posted when you get your, your first gig. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked this video and you want to see more content that helps you be more action oriented, to be more confident, and to go to that next level in your career. All right, see you next week.